yeah, I'm sure these guys can't wait. They're so excited to keep me around and continue to deal with me after nine years. So, you know, it's, I'm sure they've been chomping at the bit to, to, to hear what crap I got to talk about these days. Yeah. Bad for you guys. I feel really good again. So it's my smart, you know, what self, uh, it's kind of kicked back in, uh, after a, a complicated year where I just didn't have a lot of fight and a lot of spirit in me. So, so, um, but with all that said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm as happy as I've ever been in my coaching career. And, um, I'm unbelievably excited for what we have in place right now. Um, uh, there's, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't speak negatively of people, uh, and, and, and in reality, the people I don't like, nobody ever knows about because I don't say a word. I, I uh, usually when I when I'm sarcastic and and speak about people are the people that I like a lot. Um, so, um, but I, I uh, uh, we've got a vibe in our workouts right now that I'm really enjoying. Uh, there's a uh, you know when we when we realized that we had to go recruit some guys here in the spring. Um, we, we, we identified shooting as a must and, uh, we definitely got some shot makers right now. So, um, uh, but it's, you know, it's early July. And with that said, everyone's in a good mood and, um, it's the way it should be, man. There's no, uh, there's no one walking around here, dragging their legs or hanging their heads. And uh, it's not who I am. It's not who my staff is. It's not who our players are on the contrary. We're, we're as excited as we were the first day I ever got here. Uh, for what's in front of us. So a um, uh, couple little things before, because I assume you guys are going to eventually ask me here. Uh, James Reese is at workouts, fully admitted. Uh, he's been, because uh, he had to take a couple classes at North Texas. So he wasn't here uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, even though he was in town, he wasn't on our campus. Now he is. Um, uh, Josh gets here tomorrow. Um, and, uh, then the only person that's not on campus is take one Woodley and, uh, any of you guys that are from Philly, I know a couple of you guys, uh, like that Northeast part of the world, uh, school, public school ends there late in June. So, uh, everyone on our campus is deemed them a qualifier. We're just waiting for, uh, the thumbs up from the clearinghouse, which we're anticipating will take place sometime this week. Dave, do you want to go ahead and get us started? Hey, Frank, good to see you again. Thanks for doing this. Uh, you just mentioned about the roster. Uh, had the other guys, did they come in as a group? Was it uh, trickling in? And, and how does that go into workouts? Are they allowed to work out as like a full team now or is it just small groups? Yeah, no, it's it's we're back to normal. It's not what we dealt with last year with COVID. Uh, we we're you know, we have meetings. We were on the court together. We have uh, a, a team practice once a week for an hour and 15 minutes uh the other four days of the week we use as uh skill development and teaching um um they're in the weight room they're in the locker room they hang out together uh it's you know i'm able to sit down in my office and have a conversation with a player uh it's not the stuff that we unfortunately all not just us everyone dealt with last year it's uh um you know and and that's uh um, you know, we all dealt with the same restrictions uh, with the pandemic, uh, but we're all different on how we manage. And the way I manage didn't fit with the pandemic ways. So I'm not trying to make excuses for us and other people. I'm, I'm not even talking about winning and losing. I'm talking about me. Uh, the way I manage doesn't fit under the pandemic restrictions. And uh uh, so, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's all good, man. Workouts have been great. Um, uh, we had, uh, AJ Wilson, who, uh, I knew he was good. I, I mean, I remember him in high school. We talked about this when, when, when we took him, I think last time we, we visited, um, he's even better. than I thought, uh, uh, he sprained the foot and he was out for eight, nine days, I want to say, but you know, he was back out there yesterday. And, uh, so I'm, I'm, it's a fun, fun group. Joe? Hey, Coach. Good to see you. You mentioned at the very beginning just the excitement you have right now. Almost feels like you're just getting started all over again here. 
And I'm curious how much of it is more of an appreciation just to get back to some semblance of normalcy with your team and your off season, and then to have a bunch of new faces excited to be part of this program and move forward. Yeah, Joe, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, and that's not a, a slight at the guys that are not here with us anymore. It's, um, um, it's just uh, last year was a, a difficult year um, for, for, for everybody, not just men's basketball, South Carolina. Uh, we actually are on the lucky side compared to what other people dealt with. Um, uh, so we're, we're just uh, uh, reinvigorated with uh, uh, the fact that we get to function under uh, what we called normal. Uh, which is how I like to function. I, I, I've, I've said this to you guys before. I'm a people person. I'm not a phony kind of just kind of uh, do things a certain way. And then behind the scenes, now what you see is what you get with me. The same guy that's at Target is the same guy that's in the movie theater. It's the same guy that talks to you guys. It's the same guy that goes into practice. And it's the same guy uh, that runs his family the, the, the same way. I, I, I don't change who I am depending on my, my environment. I'm always who I am. And uh, last year, the environment didn't allow me to be who I am. And uh, uh, so, you know, it's, it's for me personally, it's fun to, to, to be able to function to what I think is a strength uh, of mine, which is be around people, uh, not just to try and impact people, but people impact me. And that allows me to uh, do my job a little bit better. Uh, and then the, the, you know, the, when you're somewhere for an extended period of time, you know, you take the same road to work every day. You, you wake up in the same bed. You, you, you see the same people. And, and it, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just kind of gets uh, redundant to a certain extent. Well, what happens is now all of a sudden you've got a Chico Carter, James Reese, a A.J. Wilson. Guys have been at other places. And all of a sudden, they're on your campus, and they're so excited to be a part of what we're doing. I, the joy that they bring to every workout, whether it's in the weight room or on the court, um, you know, you're, you're recruiting Josh, and you know, we recruit him real hard out of high school. And it, as soon as we called, it was like done. It was like, man, I, I should have come here to start with. Let's the same way I told Chico and James, I made this mistake before. I'm not making it this time around. And they were so excited to jump on board. Josh was the other way. He was like, I should have listened to you the first time. I can't wait to get there. And it was, so it, it's uh, that, that vibe, man. It's, it's, it's fun to be around. And, um, you know, when you're around young people, it, it, it gets you excited. And that's, that's, uh, that's what these guys are doing for me right now. Michael. Hey, Frank, um, what, what was the process like with, uh, recruiting your son with with Brandon, uh, who kind of approached who, and what, did you guys just kind of talk at the dinner table about it, or and, it just, and what does it mean to have him be a part of this program? Uh, it's funny. Bruce started the recruitment process, um, and, uh, uh, and then Bruce gets up and leaves, and leaves me behind to deal with it. So it's, uh, <laughs> um, but no, I it, that was uh, Brandon had always wanted to, to play for me and play here. Um, coming out of high school, uh, I don't think I was ready uh, to deal with that responsibility in our relationship. Um, and uh, I've, I've never coached my kids. I'm a dad to my kids. Uh, that's a, the coaching components, a different dynamic. And I, I, I needed to be uh, in a better place in my relationship with him to take on the responsibility of bringing coaching player into our relationship. And um, uh, I think he uh, has grown up a lot uh, from an understanding of how hard it is to win a game. Um, I think he's, uh, he's in a much better place there. Uh, the job Dave Dickerson and them did um, with him as a human being at Upstate is phenomenal. I, I, I walked up to Dave this summer and I just gave him a hug. I said, I wasn't telling you this on the phone. I, I needed to hug you, man. I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for what you've done with my son and helping him uh, grow, mature, hold him accountable, challenge him, all the things that, uh, that go into coaching people. And, uh, uh, and then the last part of it is, uh, you know, I needed Anya to, to sign off on, uh, uh, 
it's uh she she you know i told brandon uh she he needed to to go let her know that that he was at peace and ready to make this work and um and uh because it's a family deal uh at the end of the day it's uh um it's it, it's awesome man it's a, and this is so when i'm making decisions um and i'm comfortable saying this to you guys because I say it when I'm playing golf with people that I don't know a whole lot. Uh, at the end of last year, uh, there was a lot of doubt. Uh, there was doubt in our locker room from the players towards me, me towards the players. There was just doubt. And I've never been around that in my life. Uh, and, and as, a, as, as I separated from last year and, and I started digging in for next year, uh, I needed to eliminate doubt. And if I can't trust my own son, I got major problems in life, forget coaching basketball. So uh, having him around uh, is going to give me someone I trust right away. It uh, doesn't mean he's going to be perfect. doesn't mean the relationship is going to be perfect. But at the end of the day, he trusts me and I trust him. And I thought that was very important for our locker room. Uh, and then after being in workouts, he's actually playing pretty well. So I'm excited to, uh, to have him around. I'm sure there's going to be days where he and I will be ready to go at each other's necks, but you know, that's, that's uh, like I told them before we did it, we're both going to sign up for the job. We both got to deal with the good and the bad. And it, it's not just a good. So uh, away we go. And uh, I know he's a good teammate and the guys like him. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, now it's, he's got to line up like everyone else and do his best every day, make our team the best it can be. Hey, everybody. Um, I, I know a lot of you have asked to record for some reason. Um, we're not able to let a lot of people record. So Patrick will get this on the FTP just as soon as possible after we're done. Uh, Colin, go ahead. Oh, good. So I can say anything, Emma, and then we can edit it out. No Change editing. It. Some people are recording. <laughs> and then we can talk about people's sources again. Uh, I, like ahead, the, I like the way this works. I'll try not to say anything that needs to get me edited in this question either. Um, Frank, you obviously bring back um, guys like key and Jermaine how important is that just even on the court and with so many new guys um, to have those guys as veteran leaders vocal leaders in the locker room uh it's awesome I mean that's uh Wilden uh, Trayvon um uh you know th those guys have been through it uh, and not just not just through it but after a miserable year last year uh that that uh, uh they they were so excited to to, to, you know what let's 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 go with this let's make this better uh you know so I, it's it's great it, it gives them gives the new guys a voice of people that understand me understand our staff understand uh, what works and what doesn't work here um uh, but then again they they you know we it's what i've told our team we're we've hit this reset button completely uh the the whole i just told you guys the whole regaining trust uh, is like from day one again, and and we're all uh, humble to to the opportunity that we have, and uh, and excited to, to learn and grow and earn each other's trust. So um, uh, there's a uh, um, you know the guys that were here last year. Uh, I don't I I don't just like I didn't walk into the year after the Final Four and talk about the Final Four. That the the team the new year doesn't care about the previous year. Uh, same thing. I'm not walking into this year's team and talking about last year. Uh, it's just that it doesn't, no one really cares about last year right now. The only thing we care is about today. And, uh, and, but some of those returning guys have to keep that in the back of their minds, all the stuff that took place that led to uh, our inability to, you know, to play to the way we've played in my time here, uh, to the personality of our program. And, and, and then at the end of the day to win and lose games and, uh, so uh, we 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 got to keep that in the back of our heads to to keep us, you know, keep our feet in the in the place that we stand, so we can uh, deal with the problems that are in front of us. And from an on court standpoint, just how big is it to get those guys back? Being able to just obviously the athleticism and the talent that they have that can impact this year's team. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jermaine, you're talking about one of the top five freshmen in the league two years ago. You know, Keyshawn, you're talking about. Uh, you know, somebody that 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 has shown growth uh, with uh, the different things that he does as a player now compared to what he used to do as a freshman. And uh, uh, and and that wow 
moment of a game. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, uh, but with all that said, they both also wore uniforms and played major minutes on a team last year that couldn't put it together. So they, they, they have to kind of take a step back and, and, and reconnect with what we did two years ago. Uh, my, not talent wise in their minds. So, so we can be better prepared for next year, but that's, uh, uh, that's that's kind of the thing I'm talking about. Those two guys keeping that in the back of their heads for the most part, you know. And then Wildens, for example, uh, you know, Wildens played his best stretch of basketball the last five six games of the year last year, uh, and he's carried that into the off season. He's actually practicing his tail off right now. Might be the strongest guy on our team right now. Um, you know, so it's uh, I'm excited. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to have those guys back and 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 turn them loose. And I I. I You'd have to ask them. I don't want to speak for them. I know the way that they act and I know what they tell me, but it's not my place to tell you what they tell me. It's their place for them to tell you what they want to share. Uh, but they make me feel like they're excited to be here. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm geeked up for, for that. Mitch? Coach, how long before you really felt like yourself again? You talked about losing that fight, and you know, obviously, you got these new guys, new faces in here now, um, and it's a good vibe. Uh, but you went through some things and had a couple of different things you had to work through in the off season immediately after the season ended for you guys. So, how long did it take for you to feel like yourself again? Uh, physically, I I I didn't feel good till after the season ended. I started feeling progressively better. Um, sometime in the middle of February. Uh, that's when I started, I was able to start eating normal again. So now my energy was starting to kick back in. Um, I, I know I don't look like it, but I love working out. Um, and, and that's when I was able to start going in the weight room. And uh, I mean, the, the, the arthritis that I got hit with attacked me so bad that I couldn't hold a basketball. My hands hurt so bad. Uh, so forget the weight room. And, and, uh, and then I couldn't eat food. I couldn't keep food down. So I, it was hard for me to, 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 to do my job uh, from a physical standpoint. Um, you know, and then uh, I, I don't think it's any secret. Uh, you know, I, I had to engage in some conversations after the season uh, with the people I answered to that, uh, that were real and honest. And I respected them, but I'd never, it's the first time in my career that I have a bad year. And, you know, and I was disappointed because um, of, you would think that we're coming off a bad four-year run, not the winning a six-year period since the 70s at this school. And, and you know, and we dealt with all kinds of stuff. You, I, I would have thought that that conversation would come after this year. We have another year. But I, we had to have them. I'm all for honesty. I applaud the people I answered to for the honest conversation that – that I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, that I had behind closed doors. And, and, and once those conversations ended and I realized that, you know what, they still want me here, uh, that reinvigorated me. That, that got me excited again about, you know, uh, my health is good. Uh, I, you know, I've, I had people come up to me and say, hey, man, are you, you going to quit coaching? Are you kidding me? This is the only thing I've ever done in my life. I, I, I'm 55 years old, not 75. And, and, and I just had a bad year with my health and, and it wasn't knock on wood. It wasn't a life and death situation. Uh, it's just like, it was hard during the year. And, uh, but I'm, I'm physically good right now. I'm back in the weight room. I'm actually as strong as I've been in a while. Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying life, man. I, I enjoy my job. I love living here. Uh, I, I, the people I answer to have been great to me my whole career here. Um, you know, it's like every job, there's some challenges that, that, that I keep those private because there's no job that's perfect. But at the end of the day, I work for people to tell me the truth. And that's all I ever want in life is people to tell me the truth. And, uh, cause I, I take pride in giving people the truth. And so now that, that, my feet are back on the ground and, and I'm strong as I'm standing on my feet. I'm ready to take on this again, the way we did my first eight years here, which was contrary to popular belief and, and contrary to a lot of the, 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 
listen, there's about five people on Twitter that wanted me fired after five games my first year here. So every time we go through a bad two-week stretch, those five people start making a lot of noise, you know? And I know this, I don't really live life off this right here. That's my phone for those of you guys who can't see. Uh, you know what? I don't hide. I don't stay in my bedroom. I don't stay in my office. I'm out. I'm amongst people. I've yet to have anyone come up to me and say to me, man, your team sucks. Not, not one person. On the contrary, it is droves of people come up to me and say, man, we're so happy that you're still here. We're so happy you're our coach. Don't ever change. I can't wait to come see your team play. Now, those five people that, you know, they've, they've made it popular on uh, chat rooms and social media uh, to, to always be loud and, and comment on uh, how I should be fired. Man, that started my first year here. You guys have been covering me since then. You know, it's five games into my first year. People said, this guy ain't getting it done. I, are, are you, you know what, me? You know, and so I, I'm, I have a joy. I, I tell people all the time. I'm loud, and I know I drop words sometimes that people don't like, but you know, it's funny. You should go check your children's iPods. I bet you they listen to that a lot more than I say it. Um, but um, uh, I am as positive a human being as you're ever going to be around. I do not dwell in negativity. I don't walk around feeling sorry for myself. I don't have a dead leg that I just drag everywhere I go. On the contrary. I walk tall, I walk proud, and I'm excited about the people I'm with. And uh, I don't hide. And that's why I'm doing some of these Gamecock Club functions later on in, in, in July. I can't wait to get around our fans. I can't wait to let them know, like, yo, it's going to be all right, man. It's going to be okay. It was, it was okay for eight years. Unfortunately, last year, I, it's me. Me. I, I dealt with that. I handled it. I missed it. It's me. I'm still here. I'm going to stand tall, tall and I'm going to put a team on the court that's going to make our fans proud the way teams made our fans proud for a long time. You don't go from 3,000 people a game my first year to top 20 in attendance four years in a row because your team stinks. You actually do that because your team plays a certain way that people respect. And um, so it's uh, that's what's coming. That's what's got me excited. Sorry for the long answer, Mitch, but, you know, it's – I, I, I don't know if you feel it because I hate these computers. I just told our, our mental health folks that came by to spend uh, about 30 minutes with me earlier today about our team and they had some new people working. And, and I told them, I said, I'm done with Zoom. I can't stand Zoom. You don't get a feel for people on Zoom. I can't stand it. And uh, Emily told me about doing this. I said, absolutely. I thought we were going to do it in person. And she goes, no, we're still on the computer. So I... I'm not going to drag politics into this, but I guess the media is still, I'm surprised you guys aren't wearing masks as we go through the computer. Well, hopefully we'll pull up on you whenever we can. So appreciate the long winded answer. And by the way, I ain't forgotten about my deal. I'm buying you guys lunch here pretty soon. So just so you guys know, I ain't forgotten about that one. And, and, and Mike, I still owe you a cup of coffee. Bill, go ahead. Am I invited for lunch? Phil, you're my guy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just don't, just so, don't, don't wear that Clemson shirt you wear every once in a while. It's red. Oh, my so, uh, so um, I want to ask you about NIL and recruiting, okay. yeah. especially when you see a, a, a dude down in Miami who's going to pay six thousand dollars per football player and more for Miami kids to go to Miami. How is that going <clears> to <throat> work into recruiting moving forward when you start talking to kids about what South Carolina can give you? I, I you know, Phil, I, 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 <laughs> this is complicated. Um, I believe I've shared with you guys that I've been a big advocate behind the scenes on allowing this to happen from since 2010. And I've been trying to convince decision makers that we needed to be proactive and generate ideas on how to make this happen because it wasn't right. And it, with me, it all started in 2010 with Jacob Pullen and Fear the Beard when I was at K-State. And it was, uh, 
people were making t-shirts and in the state of Kansas and they were selling like hotcakes and, and all of a sudden uh, compliance stepped in and made everyone stop selling the shirts because of the whole name image and likeness, even though the kid wasn't making a penny off of it. That's when I said, wow, this is wrong. This, this, this ain't right. You know, everyone's got, everyone should deserve the opportunity to profit from this moment. This isn't right. So I've shared numerous ideas. I'm not going to bore you with my main idea on this topic. Uh, I've always felt that, uh, yeah, that the young people uh, add value to our university, but when they take the court or the field and they put USC on their chest, we add value to their life too. And, and because college fan bases are different than professional fan bases. College fan bases are not about an individual. College fan bases are about their school, their community, um, where professional teams are about individuals. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a different animal. And, and both the marriage of both uh, creates a value for both. And I thought that was something that, uh, that, that we as the NCAA dropped the ball and not being proactive to finding a better solution for this. Um, this is crazy right now, Phil. It, it's... You know, I, I, I've told you before, I'm not an investigator. I don't I don't run around telling people what others do, uh, but I keep my ear to the ground because I got to do my job uh, so I know what people are up to. Uh, there's a high school kid right now that has a seven figure offer on the table if he goes to a certain school. And and it's uh, um, it, there's no there's no I'm all for people making money. I I. You know, I'm, I don't care how you do it. Go make money, man. That's what life, that's what the, the beauty of this country is about. That it, it gives you the freedom to choose what you want to do and to profit off your ideas. Uh, you know, my family couldn't make money out of, off their work. That's why they left Cuba to come here. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a free for all right now. And here's the worst part about the whole thing, Phil. I can't be involved. I can't be involved in any way, shape, or form. Now, does that mean that there's not a gray area? No, there's a, the problem is usually you got a big black area and a big white area and a narrow gray area. The way this has been put together, it's a narrow black area, narrow white area, and a huge gray area. So the way this is rolling right now, Phil, we should just throw all the rules away. Go get players. Go get players. I don't care what you do. Go get players. Let them profit off, off their name, image, and likeness. Uh, allow somebody to give them ten grand for every year that they're in school, uh, because it's, it's, it's buck wild right now. And there's no. I wish there's another word I can use. There's no other word to, uh, to use for it. And I'm all for people making money, but as a university, we're not allowed to be involved. A as a coach, I can't be involved. And you know what I'm going to manage, Phil? What do you think I'm going to have to me and every guy that has a job like mine across college campus? What do you think we? What do you think we're going to end up having to manage? Is that guy that's sitting in the locker room that's got a deal for free socks, and that and he's been in school for two years, busting his butt, and he's a real good player, but all of a sudden there's a sexy new freshman that has never done anything. Uh, someone in town decides that they're going to use that person to, to, you know, give them a car and five grand a month or whatever the people at the University of Miami you just mentioned are doing. I'm going to be blamed. Like, I got something to do with that. I'm going to have to manage that dynamic between parents and players for something I got nothing to do with. So um, I'm all for people making money. God bless them. I wish they can make I, I hope all athletes make as much as they can, especially after the way lawmakers and the NCAA basically two weeks ago said, go at it. The way that they did that and just opened up the floodgates, I, I hope that these young people take every last copper penny or bronze or whatever makes pennies what every single last one they can get. I hope they, they clean house with it. Um, Cause it's a, uh, it's, we're, we're, in, we're in a tough spot right now. I, I, I really don't know. And, and it's like everything else. Once you let the cat out of the bag, you ain't getting that cat back in the bag. So I don't know where this business is going five years from now. I, I um, you know, so, so be it. I'm, I'm, 
this is what I can tell you. I don't whine. I don't cry. I don't complain. I'm a survivor. I've been a survivor my whole life. Uh, I pay attention to what I can and can't do. I'm, um, I joke about my public school education all the time, but I take pride in being intelligent so I can make decisions and stay on the right side of the line. Uh, I will not ever uh, step foot across a line that's going to embarrass myself or embarrass the university. Uh, so uh, I, if it means I lose my job because I refuse to get involved in dirty recruiting uh, to, to pay a player to get them to come here, uh, then I'll be all right. I'll go back to landscaping. And heck, I told you, my hands feel good. Strength is good. I'll start carrying bricks around again, man. It, no big deal. I did it before. I'll do it again. Just don't ask me to go fight in a club anymore. I'll get my ass kicked too fast. I'm too far. Re I'm too far removed. That'd be a first round knockout these days. We've got five hands raised for Frank. So we'll go with those five and then we'll, we'll move over to Chuck, but John, uh, we go ahead and get us started. Didn't, didn't I tell you I felt good again? <laughs> Uh, Frank, you, you spoke earlier about uh, eliminating doubt and building trust. Do you, do you feel like the doubt has, has been eliminated up, up to this point now? And, and where do you feel like you are in, in the trust building process? Um, I think the trust is there already. Um, I, I, I think, you know, and, and you guys, I think, Emily, I don't mean to put the cart in front of the horse here, but I think you're making – our transfer first year players available to the media here pretty soon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, so you guys will be able to ask them. Uh, the reason that Wildens and those guys are still here that, uh, that Colin asked me about earlier is because they trust in me and I trust in them. So they're here. And, and the new guys, I don't want to speak for them, but if you ask them, why'd you come to South Carolina? Cause I want to play for that guy. And I love how that school plays basketball. And, and so the, the trust factor, enthusiasm to build that trust is there. Uh, now, you've heard me say this for nine years, John. I'm going to say it again. It's July. If it's not there in July, we got issues. Um, you know, now come November, we're going to throw that ball in the air and there's going to be referees, fans, and key TV cameras in the arena. And then you start determining roles and, and responsibilities. and and uh, then our life gets a little complicated sometimes. Uh, but, uh, but I'm excited to go into that moment with this group of guys. And uh, the doubt is, uh, I, I don't live in doubt. If, if I'm going to doubt, then I shouldn't be coaching. Because I, my job is to lead people. My job is to lead, not only lead our players, but I got to lead a campus. I got to lead a fan base. Um, if, and if I'm going to doubt in, in me and who I am and in our team, and, and I let, allow that to kind of fester around. Uh, I can't, I couldn't lead, you know, uh, anybody, let alone all those groups of people I just spoke about. So um, the, the doubt is, I, it's, it's nowhere around me anymore. Um, it was during last season, no surprise. I've never been through that moment. I've never doubted in my team. I don't care. Even my first year here where we were undermanned and I had players that didn't understand what I was asking and I didn't understand them. And we just, we weren't good enough to win. I never doubted in our team. Heck, we, we were like on a seven game losing streak and we, we punt one in, uh, to beat Ole Miss, who's an NCAA tournament team. Um, you know, so I never doubted in our team and, uh, but last year I did. I, I doubted in my abilities. I doubted on in the team. I it, it and and I learned the hard lesson. I better not do that ever again. And uh, so, uh, so I'm I'm uh, th there. There's there's a there's a fun um, vibe. I, I can't think of what other word I can use. There's a fun vibe right now uh, that we have amongst the guys on our team. John Del Bianco. Hey, Frank, I know how involved you stay in the NBA draft process for your guys. So having gone through it with AJ the last two years, how is this year different now that, you know, he can't withdraw and he's in it for the long run? How do you feel, you know, he's doing and, and what you're hearing from guys? Um, you know, last year was unfair just because yeah. of the COVID deal. And, and it was unfair because, you know, he, he was in the draft, but, you know, he couldn't really be anywhere to get better. Um, the year before, 
he was hurt. If you remember after his freshman year, he hurt his foot late in the year and, and he really didn't get cleared to work out till June. So he, he, you know, he was deprived of a spring of working out to get better, a summer to work out, to get better. And, um, um, this year, you know, he, he, I thought it was his most complete year as a player since he's been here. I thought he, he took a step forward. I know at the end of the year, his numbers dipped a little bit, but that comes with the unfortunate stuff that I've been talking about that last year's team had to do. But if you remember, um, uh, when we started SEC play, he was playing at a real high level and, and, uh, and he was doing different things on the court, things that we had talked about him get better at. And he's a wonderful young man. I, you, you've never heard me say anything differently about him or insinuate anything differently. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited for him. He was able to go season end the season to continue off season workouts and, uh, you know, and he's earned his way into the combine and God willing, he's going to earn himself onto a draft, into a draft pick. And if not, I think he's put himself in a place where uh, he'll probably worst case scenario end up with some kind of a, you know, two way contract or something of that nature. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for him because he, he, I've always thought he's a 10, 12 year pro. Uh, he's, he's got a great work ethic. Uh, he's very intelligent. Um, uh, you know, he's got that, that size and athleticism. Uh, he's a jump shooter, so he can shoot the ball off the move. Um, and, and the one thing that we, you know, I, I don't, I, I know you guys get tired of it and I don't mean to brag about it, but guys that come play for me, they get pretty good defensively and they, they become good defenders. And all you gotta do is, Hey, hey here's a story. Here's an idea for you guys. That's an, if I had your job is what I do. Uh, PJ Dozier's in town. Maybe since he signed an NBA contract, you know, maybe I'd kind of call him and I'd do a sit down with him and talk about his journey from McDonald's All-American to a hard freshman year to a Final Four to earning his way into the NBA and now having a, a contract. I think that'd be a fun story for a local kid. Just, just, just you know, not telling you. I, I know you guys sit around and talk about maybe why I play zone instead of man or why I play man. So it's just my opinion on maybe a story you guys can, can kind of work on. Uh, but, uh, you know, but Sindarius, PJ, Chris Silva, uh, you know, and the guys that I've coached before I got here, uh, I tell them all the time, you, you know, everyone's got talent in NBA, but if you can defend your matchup, you keep your job in the NBA. And, uh, and, and, you know, AJ's going to be able to defend his matchup and, and he's interchangeable so he can guard different places. Uh, so I, I think whoever gives him a chance, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see a keeper there. I'm really happy for him. Michael. Uh, Frank, you've been talking a lot about, you know, these new faces that you guys have brought in and, and the different vibe that you're feeling. I know it's only July and the season's a long way away, but how do you sort of, I guess, envision all these new pieces kind of meshing together on the court? And, and how do you kind of hope or what's your vision for how this team might play, this new roster might look, you know, come season time? Yeah, I, I, um, we've, we've got a competitive energy um, in workouts that's pretty powerful. Uh, I got a feeling I'm going to have to pull a couple guys off each other and in, in, in the heat of the moment next year, uh, because there's some, some hard driving, um, uh, demanding guys, uh, on our team right now. And, uh, uh, there's, there, if you, you guys have covered them, you remember Michael Carrera, he had a certain energy that he brought every time we took the court. There's a whole lot of that going on right now. Um, and, uh, so, uh, I, I think that competitive energy, is is a healthy thing i think it's something that uh that when you go through a season it keeps guys it keeps everyone grounded and allows me to do my job because guys that have competitive energy nine times out of ten are about winning and when you're about winning you just want to win the next game on the schedule you're not worried about your numbers you're not worried about any kind of individual uh popularity contest and um and uh so i i I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't sense uh, guys on our team. I don't sense that they're social media heroes. They're not, they're, they're, they're not guys that are trying to gain their fame through social media status. Uh, even though it's part of their life, I, I think they're, they're genuinely 
excited about putting a South Carolina jersey on and doing their part to get us back to an NCAA tournament and and see if we we got it in us to make another run and um, and uh, that that's the enthusiasm and the competitive energy that that I think uh, will keep us in a good place as 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 next year rolls around. Joe and then Colin. And and Michael, I don't know if you know, but I'm kind of competitive myself when I feel good. So that's uh, you know, I'm ex I'm I'm it's gonna be fun. I, you know, you guys might see me come into a game with a black eye next year. I'm not gonna tell you where from, but you know, it's gonna be fun. Uh, Coach, just to revisit the NIL thing, and when it comes to maybe recruiting, I, I you mentioned this that gray area, and I, I, we don't need to get into the weeds of that, but I'm curious from a recruiting standpoint, perhaps whether it's locally or in state, do you think this could almost become a home court advantage for schools, whether it's yourself or say other schools in different regions? Because when you talk about profiting and businesses, you can build your brand in your backyard and continue to build that at a school that's right in your backyard if you stay. Well, I, I'm not gonna mention school names because it's not my place to talk about other people. Uh, but if you go to a certain school, I think you'll see all those things are already happening aggressively from a football perspective. And if you go to other schools, all those things are happening aggressively from a basketball perspective um, and, uh, and, and sport to sport to sport that every school is different. Um, you know, the reason I, I pick on men's basketball and, and football is because for the most part, those are the two sports that make money on 99% of division one campuses around the country. Um, so, um, it's, it, I, I, the, the, here's the thing, everyone knew this was coming, but the people that were planning on how to manage it were not given the time to set a plan in place that's healthy for everybody. It, that, that, cause it, it, at the end of the day, man, that, you know, what's been happening was wrong. And now it's been righted. The problem is that when you write something, doesn't mean you just kind of abandoned law and order and just kind of say whatever. You know, there's still a there's still a relationship in place, which involves a university and a young person. It it, it it's can't be Pandora's box and just go. And unfortunately, that's what's been thrown at all of us on these on our campuses by lawmakers. And here, here's a, here's something great. Again, not trying to tell you guys how to do your jobs, but our state, the lawmakers in our state were on the front lines of pushing to change some of these rules. How about asking those lawmakers that they ever sit down and listen to a coach perspective or a athlete perspective uh, as they went through their journey to make decisions or did they just listen to some commentator on television uh, so, so they made the popular choice to gain popularity because, you know, anytime you help the underdog, the person that makes little money, you become like this Robin Hood savior of the world and you become real popular. And I don't know if you guys know this, but, uh, the better your ratings are, that means the more people watch your show. And if you're in politics, the more votes you get, then you keep your job. Uh, you know, luckily for me, I don't need votes. I just need certain people to like me. Everyone else can, you know, the, what was that Bob Knight line? One of the great lines, you know, when they bury me, bury me upside down. That You guys remember that line? That's as coaches. That's the world we live in. We really, we're not into popularity contests. We, we, we just need to keep certain people on our campuses in a good place and win games. But um, uh, God, I feel good again. Jesus Christ. My brain works a certain way when I feel good. Uh, but it's, Joe, it, it, it's, I, I'm just, some of the stuff that I'm hearing that's going on, I, I haven't even dug, I, I've already heard some stuff that's going on at certain football schools. And when I say football, because football is so big, it blows my mind. And I don't know from, I, how do you contain this in a recruit? Okay, Joe, so I'm going to give you a scenario. I'm recruiting Phil Cornblue. Can you imagine that? But I'm recruiting Phil, all right? And you are an alum at school A, and Phil is a five-star guy. And I'm recruiting Phil to come South Carolina, and I don't care where he's from. And now you're a big alum at a popular basketball school, and you read that your school's recruiting Phil too. 
who's controlling you calling Phil directly and saying, hey, uh, by the way, if you come to this school over here, uh, you have my word that you've got, uh, I, I don't care what South Carolina does, I'll give you uh, an extra penny on the dollar over them. I, so why are we going to go recruit and sit in gyms and make phone calls if it's going to become a money grab for, for recruiting the guys that are out there? You know, so let, let, just throw the rules away. Just let's go get guys. The, the heck with rules. The heck with me being gone the whole month of June and July. You know, where I'm not around my family, I'm not around my players because I'm trying to recruit the next guy. When at the end of the day, right now, this moment, everyone wants to talk NIL. So it's irrelevant. Sitting in the games, evaluate, it's all irrelevant. Hey, Joe, you good? Yeah, you're good. Okay, Joe, this is what I can do for you. You, you interested? No, that's who offered me that. Well, I can't do that. Go, leave. Next. That's what that's what recruiting's come to with this NIL situation. And And I'm not overreacting. It's just the beginning. It's going to get even worse than that as we move forward. So, and, and there's a huge gray area. So there's a lot of space for people to step into areas that there's no real right and wrong right now because the decision makers just kind of pushed this through and threw it on our campuses and said, good luck. And uh, without ever, do you think, you know, maybe they would have involved a coach that maybe it doesn't have to be me. You know, a coach that maybe has been recruiting for 40 years and he can explain some of the challenges and how to protect everybody from a recruiting standpoint. But so since they didn't put that rule book in the fire pit in my backyard, I'm going to pull out that big old Cuban. And while that fire burns with that rule book in it, I'm going to enjoy my cigar. And, you know, pretty soon I'll be selling rum and Cokes again, man. I, Right back to work. I told my wife, man, I, I said, hon, I haven't had a drink since 06. Whenever my kids are in college, I'm going out the way I came back in now. I, I'm cigars, black label, cold beer, a lot of laughter. The only thing I disagree with is I think Phil's more of a two-star recruit, but that's just that's just me. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice. All right, Colin, with the last question for Frank. Frank, you obviously mentioned Josh um, as someone that you recruited coming out of high school. What, where do you feel like he can do for this team next year? And how do you feel like he fits into what you guys want to do stylistically? Yeah, he, he's, uh, uh, he's every bit of seven feet tall. Uh, uh, he might, uh, based on who he was in high school, uh, he could be as good a runner as we have on our team. And he's unbelievably competitive at the rim. Uh, which are things that we lacked last year. I didn't think we were very competitive at the rim um, from the guard spot or the big spot, not just identifying one person. I, I, I didn't think we were very competitive at the rim either uh, last year on offense or defense. Uh, he, he brings a, a physicality at the rim with the ability to run. Uh, now, from an a offensive standpoint, he was really raw in high school. He didn't play much at LSU. Uh, I've got my opinions why he didn't play, but I'm not going to share those with you. Uh, I'll let you form your own opinion on that. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I, I, I think if he's willing to come in here and work, which is what we spoke to him about in high school, he's going to get an opportunity to play. And, and if he commits to, to that work, I think – the ceiling is nowhere near uh, anywhere where, where any of us can touch uh, as far as there's room for growth. Uh, um, you know, it's, uh, I've never, you know, he, like every other guy in high school, he'll shoot a three here and there, but that's not what he does. Um, I would say no one's ever taught him how to play in a low post. He's more of a ball screen and roll guy and go dunk alley-oops and, and offensive rebounds kind of deal. Uh, we, we, we got to spend some time with him on low post play and understanding how to, how to play with his back to the basket and create angles and seals uh, along with rolling and making decisions. Um, but, uh, but that's just, I'll start feeling that out a little better probably early next week when he's cleared because he gets here tomorrow. So he's got to go through COVID. He's got to go through physicals and all the stuff. So, uh, and I'm, I'm leaving recruiting, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, uh, we, we won't be on the floor with him until Monday, but I'm assuming starting Monday, we, we start getting a feel for him a little bit as a player. Hey, Joe, nice dog.
Thank you. He, he won't leave me alone today. So you're the second best looking guy in your picture. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Thank you so much, Frank. Appreciate it. And we will go ahead and take questions for Chuck and then questions for Brian. Hey, be nice to Brian Steele now. He's overly excited. So be nice to him. I think Emily's frozen here for a second. So, uh, Colin, we'll start off with you. Chuck, I guess just for starters, what's this offseason been like for you guys and how interesting was it trying to put together a transfer recruiting class, not able to get some of these guys on campus until they, they touched down and, and began school? Uh, Coach, I'm not sure if you're trying to speak there, but you're still muted if you are. Can you guys speak me, hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Yep, we got you now. Um, yeah, like I said, I thought um, I thought the portal was completely new and different for everyone. Um, so, you know, I, I think it also gave guys an opportunity to go pursue proven collegiate players. And it seems like this is a, a new a new way of college recruiting. It's here to stay. So I was just excited. I was just excited about you know trying to uh, improve our program and improve our roster. So it was uh, it was good. It was good for for us. I think. Next up is Colin. Yeah, I guess. Chuck, you obviously recruited a little Josh Gray out of high school. What did you see from him through the recruitment process then? And how nice is it to finally get him on campus after um, kind of a detour there at LSU? Um, I think, you know, the one thing that stands out with Josh is his size. I mean, it's legitimate, you know, 6'11 and a half, maybe seven feet tall, 250 pounds. There just aren't an, enough like human beings walking the earth that look like him. <laughs> So, you know, when you see a 17, 18 year old kid that looks the way Josh looks and runs the way he runs, you know, you get excited. Now he's raw and he's young and he's got to continue to develop and get better. But, um, but he's, he's big, he's big and he's got tons of potential. Michael. Hey Chuck, uh, you know Frank was talking about trying to bring in some some shooters uh, with this recruiting class and the, the transfer class that you guys brought in, and um, you know I know there are a lot of new faces and just what's what's kind of your vision for how I guess this team and these new players might play and look on the court, you know, once you get to the season. What how do you kind of hope they all they all mesh together these new pieces? Um, you know, we're hoping that at least I'm hoping that we have some synergy and chemistry. And that um, there's a level of trust. I know Frank had touched on that earlier today. You know, when you've got that level of trust and you've got that synergy and enthusiasm, um, you know, great things can happen. So obviously it's early. It's July. We, we've only been together four or five weeks and we still have one or two guys who, who we need to get on campus. Um, but it's exciting what, what could be here in the next two or three months. John Del Bianco. Hey Chuck, Trayvon might not got to the got to the program there in January, and it, it took a couple of weeks for him to kind of get situated and get get settled in, and then he started getting some starts there towards the end of the season and started playing 
a little bit more, a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable. Just how big has this offseason been for him to be in Columbia most of the summer and kind of get in a little bit of better shape? Because I know that was kind of hard for him when he first came in. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's really it was really critical the spring and summer for, for Trayvon. And I think Scott's done a phenomenal job. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys have seen him, but Trey, he looks phenomenal. I mean, he's completely transformed his body. And as you know, when you transform your body the way he has, you gain confidence, you start to gain confidence, your performance, you know, goes through the roof. So he's had a really good summer. Obviously, it's not over yet, but um, super, super impressed to see how how he's been able to change his body. And along with that, his attitude and, and his confidence starts to grow. And, and before you know it, he turns himself into a pretty good player. If I could follow up on that, just what did you think of, you know, what you saw from him on the court, you know, last, this, this past season, just, you know, kind of thrown on, thrown into the fire? Um, you know, it was unfair because literally he was thrown into the fire. But he had moments, you know, in the Georgia game, he had not played in a game yet to that point. And then he, uh, we put him in the game just to see how, you know, how he would react. And I think like the first five minutes, he scored like six points, had like three rebounds, uh, maybe a block or two. One of, the, one of his six points was a dunk against, an, a, uh, I think, uh, one of their better players. So, you know, his, his potential is tremendous. And, um, and he's had, he's shown flashes of that um, in a limited uh, period of time since he's been here. Joe? Hey coach, Joe Gorcha from WIS TV. I know there's not many new faces when you talk about the coaching staff, but with different people going into different roles, how would you describe just the chemistry and how important really is it for those relationships to be where they're at currently and you guys having that trust in each other already to help really develop this team to where you want it to go. Yeah, I, I think you just touched on it, right? Like um, different different faces in the program, different roles. Um, it's really, really important. Um, I think we didn't have a chance to, to develop that chemistry and synergy last year because of COVID. Um, obviously it was no one's fault. I mean, there were rules and regulations in place that we 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 would we respect it, um, but the truth of the matter is we we couldn't spend time with our kids. We couldn't interact with our kids. We couldn't um, we couldn't build that bond and that trust that we normally do. Um, when you see a Frank Martin team over the years, they're tough and they're disciplined because they've been able to create that bond, and uh, we just weren't able to do that last year. So it feels good to um, to have that that um, opportunity this summer to, to spend time with these guys um, so we can so we can build that trust. And it, Frank touched on it earlier. It's a fun group. It's a fun group to be around. So we look forward to, uh, you know, going to work every day because it's, it's exciting. They're, they're fun to be around. They're, they're willing to learn. They're willing to buy into what we're selling. And, um, and this is how you build that trust and that chemistry and that synergy that hopefully will pay off in a few months. Michael and then Colin. Uh, <clears throat> Chuck, you just kind of touched on it a little bit as far as how COVID impacted you guys last year as a team, but I know Frank had said COVID hit you hard too uh, when you guys both missed uh, the LSU game. And uh, just curious, I mean, how, how did that impact you during the year last year? How, how are you feeling now? And, and just, you know, how excited, I guess, are you to be able to move forward with more normalcy this season? I'm feeling great. I really am. Um, I'm feeling, as Frank mentioned earlier, stronger than ever before. You know, uh, my enthusiasm is high. My energy is high. Um, I think not being a part of the team, people who are not in our world, you know, college athletics, uh, collegiate uh, basketball, they don't understand, like, being away from your team for three days is an eternity, let alone missing two games, let alone missing 14 days. And I've always felt like, me personally, I've always felt like if, if, I, can, if I can interact with the kids or interact with the staff, that I would, I would impact the staff or, or the kids or the program in a positive way. And um, I didn't have that opportunity last year. You know, I just wasn't around him for 14 days and neither was Frank. So you just 
they often just felt like there were certain ideas or concepts or your, your energy and practice every day that you would help the, that group turn the corner, but we didn't have the, uh, we didn't have a chance to do it. So uh, I'm feeling great today and I'm grateful to, uh, to be back on the sideline with these guys in the summer and, and with Frank and the rest of the staff. Colin? Chuck, now that you've kind of been able to be on the court with some of these guys, um, how have the transfers particularly looked um, from what you expected and what they're showing through these first early months and especially this freshman class that's on campus with Jacoby and Devin? Um, you know, it's um, you don't know these guys well. You're still trying to learn who they are as people, um, trying to get to know them as, as players. But, I mean, Frank mentioned it earlier, they're a fun, a fun group to, to be a part of. Um, I think the, uh, the transfer kids have thus far kind of, um, kind of, you know, shown that they're very capable. There's a reason why those guys were on winning teams and in some cases teams that played in the NCAA tournament. And, um, and then the young guys, I think, you know, I think one of the greatest, one of the smartest things that Frank did a year ago was wrap up Jacoby and Devin Carter. I mean, he, he was, obviously we were all involved, but Frank was the one that said, Hey, we got to get these guys early. Um, because they're, they're more than good enough. And sure enough, as the year went on, we weren't allowed to go see them because of COVID. But, you know, Devin Carter finished in a ESPN top 100, and Jacoby could very easily be a top 100 player. So, um, you know, it's exciting to have the talent, the young talent, and it's also exciting to have the veteran guys who've transferred in who have had success at other places. And sticking with recruiting for a second, I know you can't talk about the guys you're recruiting in these classes, but – now that you're able to get back on on the road and have these guys on campus, how, number one, how nice is it? And number two, where do you feel like you guys are from that perspective with the 2022 and 2023 groups? No, um, it's great to get back out and uh, interact with these kids and, and watch them and see them. I think, uh, I think we've targeted uh, um, a good group of kids who fit who we are, who fit Frank, who fit our program. Um, they're talented, they're tough, they're givers, they're winners. Um, so I think we're involved with the right guys. Now it's just a matter of actually, you know, pulling it off and, and getting these guys. All right, we'll go one more question for Chuck and that's to John Del Biaco. Chuck, on Chico Carter, I know Frank has said a couple of times now that he regrets not bringing him in a couple of years ago. Just what do you remember about Chico as a high school player at Cardinal Newman? I know you got to see him play a lot. Um, I think with Chico, the thing that stands out is he's a relentless worker. Like, that's the one thing that really stood out to me while he was at uh, Carter Newman. He was always in the gym with the coaches. He was always in the gym with his dad. And he was a guy that enjoyed the process. Sometimes there are guys who are in the gym. They're working out. Um, but, but they don't really enjoy it. They're doing it because someone's asking them to do it or forcing them to do it. That was the one thing that really stood out to me about Chico. He was, he was a relentless worker. And he really paid attention to detail, like his footwork and follow through and ability to, to get from point A to, to point B off the dribble. Like he was meticulous. I thought for a kid that young, I would watch him and look at him in warmups and he was really locked in. So you knew it was just a matter of time that he would turn himself into a pretty good player. And how have you seen him progress after a year at Murray State? Well, I think like any other kid, you know, if, if you're in college for a year or two, um, you know, there's a learning curve and, you know, he, he went to Murray State and got a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, but just being able to play um, a, a season yeah. on a collegiate level, a division one level, prepares you for that transition um, to a place like, like ours. I mean, we're different. We have a different culture. We do things differently, but he certainly, I would imagine, certainly probably ahead of maybe an incoming freshman who's 17, 18 years old, who's never played a college game. Okay, thank you so much, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, uh, guys. We appreciate, we appreciate it. Cheers, yep, Chuck. Thank you. All right, questions for Brian. All right, Dave, go ahead. How's it going, Steel? Good to see you again. Uh, congrats on uh, getting the gig. Just how did it come about? Uh, you know, did you kind of know that they were looking at you or was it a complete surprise when Frank asked you? Yeah, what's up, 
David. It's good to see you, man. Um, it was it was quick. Um, you know, Frank grabbed me, I guess, the day Bruce left. And um, just mentioned he wanted to talk to people in administration and, and some other people. Um, grabbed me probably 72 hours later, and um, we were rolling. Michael? Hey, Brian, uh, Michael and Nana with the state. I hope you're doing well. Um, just wanted to ask you a little bit about just your relationship with Frank. You know, how has it kind of evolved over the years, obviously being a player, but also, you know, being part of the coaching staff now in this elevated role, just how has it evolved and, and what's sort of the dynamic like between you guys? Yeah, I mean, um, Frank, he means the world to me. Um, you know, he's he's given me so many opportunities and, uh, it's, it's hard to really kind of put into words um, what he means because he's just, he's always believed in me. And, and as a young person, um, you know, when you have someone like Frank who, who um, you know, has status and, and respect and uh, has won a lot of games and, and really knows what he's doing, um, you know, more, more than just our relationship, his, his belief um, has just always meant so much to me. And um, just spending so much time around him um, you know, he, he's always preached loyalty to us and, uh, you know, he lives by it and he's, he's been incredibly loyal and, um, he's always had my back and it's, it's hard. Like, you don't, it's, it's kind of an old school value, right? Like loyalty is not something, um, today's day and age it's, it's, it's your brand and, and what can people do for you? And, um, it's almost the opposite with him. It's, it's, he's always been, gone so far out of his way to help me and um, done so much for me, but not just me, every, everyone who's been a part of our program and, uh, you know, all of my teammates who, you know, even, I guess I kind of look at them as my little brothers, like guys who were here when I was a GA or a video coordinator, uh, you know, or even now as an assistant coach, like, you know, I look at these guys in the locker room, like they're, they're my little brothers. And um, Frank, Frank does so much for everyone here. And uh, to just have that relationship with a guy like that um, and, and everything he's done for me and the way he's had my back, man, uh, it's just, it's really special. It really is. Colin and then Reggie. Yeah, Brian, kind of sticking with it. How surreal is it for you maybe to be back in a situation where not only you played here, but worked as on staff here and now you're an assistant? How have you had that moment yet where it feels real or is it still kind of cloud nine for you at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's it's cloud nine every day for me, um, but it's been that way, man. Like, you know, I used to, I remember just kind of walking in every day for practice, whether it was at the CLA or, um, you know, in our practice facility over here. And like every day when you take the court, like, you know, we have like the biggest practice facility in America and it's one of the most unique practice facilities, too. So you come out every single day, you're in an arena. And it's an arena where a lot of great players have played and, and there's a lot of history. So every day is surreal walking into the gym. Um, but coaching is a journey and, and it's it's difficult. And um, just something like having my own office, like it's it's awesome. And I walk in every day like I put a key in an office and um, it's just so special. And for it to be at South Carolina, um, you know, this this place means the world to me. And, um, you know, I, I've given my best effort every single day, whether it was a player or a GA or a student assistant or a video guy. And um, for, for it to be rewarded so quickly, um, it, it's awesome, man. And coming to work every day, like I, I really do light up, you know, like I swipe my Carolina card to get in the door. There's a big Gamecock basketball thing. And to just be a part of this place and, and this program, like I just love it. I come in every day jacked up. All right, welcome back to Reggie. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, Brian, a few questions for you. One, how's the knee? Are, are you uh, <laughs> out there and run with the guys? Yeah, uh, so I ended up, uh, so I've torn like five meniscus now. Um, yeah, I did, I did my other one a couple times now too in my left knee. Um, but to be honest, they feel great. And, and uh, you know, I try to still be like the young coach or whatever. And I get out there and... Um, you know, sometimes like 
I really regret it. <laughs> like I get out there, I'm dealing with guys like Wildens and, and TV who are just gigantic and I'm wrestling around with them and man, they just beat me up. Um, but you know, I still think I can get out there and, um, I do love being on the court. Like I always love playing. And so, um, I do get out there as much as possible and, and try to be as active as I can on the court. And also any plans to bring back the mustache? You know what? Um, yes. I don't know when, but that's more like, more like a summer deal, you know, um, not really a, a serious professional deal. Um, but you know, if I'm on vacation, I'll grow it out. Back to Michael. Uh, uh, Brian, how, how do you feel like, I guess, your, your style as a, as a coach has evolved over the years? You know, what, how, what have you learned? What are some of the things that maybe, maybe surprised you along the way that you didn't r realize about coaching? And, and also, I mean, how far do you want to take this thing? Do you hope to be a, a head coach someday? I mean, what's sort of the, the journey that you hope to, to be on, you know, on, on this path? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, I'd love to be a head coach one day. I think that's a, a long ways away. Um, you know, I am still really young and honestly, every day is a learning experience for me and, and being around guys like Chuck and, and Will Bailey every day. And obviously, Frank, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning and, and they're really high level guys. Um, and so they're they're really helping me um, get better. Um, but in, in terms of coaching style, man, I just am kind of myself like I've always been really intense. I've always been really passionate, um, but I always have liked to have a lot of fun, too. So, um, you know, like I said, I come in every day jacked up and I think anyone who's been around me will tell you that that um, I have a lot of energy and I'm, I'm really excited about South Carolina basketball so I think that kind of permeates throughout the day everyone around me um, but I'm I'm intense I'm competitive and um, you know I'm passionate I don't I don't mind getting after guys um, but you know I kind of like I said I kind of am more still in the young coach role um, try to really build guys up and, and make them feel good about themselves. Colin? Yeah, Brian, you obviously had a stint over there at Queens before coming back to South Carolina. What did you learn from your time there that you can apply? And what are some things that you've now kind of learned the first couple of weeks on the job? Man, I could, I could write a book about what I learned at Queens. Um, you know, I was working for one of the best head coaches in America, Bart Lundy. I mean, literally like one of the winningest head coaches in America. I think there's across all levels of college basketball, there's like a thousand, maybe 1100 teams. And in the last five or six years, Bart is the sixth or seventh winningest coach. I'm getting bad on my stats because I don't, I don't recruit there anymore. Um, but he's one of the winningest coaches in college basketball. And um, so I learned a lot about winning and, and I learned a lot about people. Um, you know, he's so much more than a basketball coach. Um, being at a small campus, you, you really have to learn the relationships part. And then being at an elite division two school, you got to recruit your guys every day because there's people calling, um, you know, like it's college basketball. It can be a dirty game. So you have to recruit your guys every day and, and make them want to be where they're at. And, uh, you know, I think that's really valuable now with the transfer portal. Like you do have to recruit your good players, all your guys every single day. And you got to make them feel loved. And um, that was that was one of my biggest takeaways. But it was different. And basketball was different. And um, you know, I was so focused on what we did here um, at South Carolina that getting out kind of opened my eyes like, oh, there's other ways to win games. There's other ways to guard. Um, you know, there's other zones. It was just it was it was an eye opening experience. And uh, it, it was awesome. I loved it. And I know practice hasn't like full team practice and hasn't really started yet. But just do you know what position group you're going to be working with or is it kind of still to be determined? Yeah, I think it's kind of TBD. Um, I'll be kind of, I feel comfortable with both. Um, you know, as a GA, I spent a lot of time at the bigs because I was more of a guard in college. So I kind of wanted to learn that side. And, um, you know, I love working with the bigs, uh, but I, you know, I love working with the guards too and feel really comfortable uh, with either. So kind of wherever I'm needed, I don't, I don't really have a determined group right now. John Del Bianco. Hey, Brian, first off, congratulations. Good to see you. Um, you are now in the unique position where you get to recruit kids to your alma mater. Just how do you go about recruiting that angle and kind of had, how much of that is going to be on, on the a priority for you and kind of explaining to these kids what you went through there 
and what you can envision them going through if they end up picking South Carolina. Yeah. Hey, John, um, I think it makes it easy because there's not a question that they can ask that I can't answer um, and answer honestly. So, um, you know, it puts me at an advantage, not just talking about basketball, um, but talking about campus life, um, talking about academics, talking about um, the city of Columbia or the state of South Carolina. Um, so, I mean, I think we have some of the best facilities in America right now. And, um, you know, we didn't have all this when I was here necessarily, not when I was playing. And so I think when you get kids here, um, they're, they're blown away and they realize, man, South Carolina is a really special place and I want to play there. And it helps because, you know, obviously I have a great relationship with Frank and I feel comfortable recruiting players that he wants. You know, I know what he wants and um, been around good teams that we've had here. So um, I think it really puts me at an advantage being, being an alumni and um, really just being able to sell kind of every part of not just the basketball, but the academics and um, the campus and the city and the state. All right, one more question for Brian from Colin. Brian, just kind of sticking with recruiting, but how has that gone so far? What is some of the response you've received on the road from the, the guys you are recruiting that you obviously can't talk about? And, and when you're out recruiting, what do you kind of look for in a player? Um, well, I guess starting looking for in a player, um, you know, guys who are, are tough. Um, you know, we really value guys who, who want to work and uh, who are tough. Um, but size, length, skill um, are things that, that we really prioritize. You know, we've always had bigger teams, bigger perimeter players over the year. And uh, so that's a focus for us. Um, but, but guys who just want to want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Uh, you know, this is a program. And uh, we want guys who, who want to win. And it's not just about them and their success, um, but it's about everybody. And uh, so that's, that's a big focus. And um, what was it? Oh, response on the road. It's been awesome, man. You know, I played my AU basketball, high school basketball in this state. So a lot of my friends are now high school coaches and AAU coaches. And it's crazy to see them because, like, you know, we, we're young still. We just got done playing and we're all trying to figure coaching out. And um, it's, it's just special, like, seeing everybody grow and uh, having them be a part of my journey. You know, a lot of my coaches are um, still in the community, still coaching AU, still coaching high school basketball. So running into everybody, um, it's, it's awesome, man. It brings me a lot of joy. I love recruiting in this state. And, um, you know, that's, that's going to be one of my priorities is um, getting after South Carolina kids.